Hello, my name is Kevin Hill. I am an Automation Solutions Architect at NetApp, and we are going to show you how NetApp is making the cloud easier. With this video, we are going to show you how NetApp enables you to deploy your desktop as a service for your public cloud quickly and easily. Our first step is to get into our vCenter environment and validate what's there. Here, we are going to check our data stores and find out what data stores currently exist. We can see we have a few here created with a different workflow. And now we'll also go and look to see what virtual machines and templates exist in vCenter, since we will be leveraging these in just a minute. Our next step is to create our desktops for the public cloud. This is where we will create a new NetApp vFiler, dedicate storage to that vFiler, perform all necessary network configurations, initiate actions directly in vSphere for creation of the data stores, and instantly create the requested number of space-efficient desktops. All of this with one click. To do this, all we have to do is to access our workflow automation system via any browser, log in with our credentials, select from the available workflows for our user ID, provide the inputs that the workflow requires, and then click Execute. And that's it. Now let's get into workflow automation. By logging in, we will be shown only the workflows we are authorized to use. In this case, we can see the sample workflows that come with workflow automation, which we'll minimize, and our cloud workflows. Here we want to select our data store with vFiler support VDI. And as an operator, we cannot change the workflow, but we can select to execute it. Now we can provide the workflow inputs. Here we see the controllers in our environment. We can also select one of the aggregates on that controller. We have volume labels and a label for the vFiler we wish to create. We can optionally provide network information as well, but we have some defaults available to us, so we'll leverage those. We can also pull in information from vSphere. This way we can see the ESX clusters that are available. We can provide the data store size, the number of data stores to create, and the clones to create across those data stores. And we can also pull in which template from vSphere we would like to use. We can preview this to get a glimpse of what would happen if we were to press execute. With preview, we can see all of the steps that would process as part of the workflow. Here we would create our vFilers, our storage components, the data stores, and then do our clones. This looks good, so let's go ahead and press execute. We will still plan, and then we will go through the execution process. Again, we're creating our vFilers our storage components, exporting them, going and creating the data stores, and then leveraging the rapid cloning utility to create the data stores themselves. Our next step, as you may have guessed, is to get back into vSphere to validate what's being done. The workflow we just processed is leveraging NetApp's Virtual Storage Console's rapid cloning utility to create the virtual machines from the template selected within vSphere. But before we get to that, Let's go and validate that our data stores have been created by the workflow itself. Here we can see that our two data stores have been created, so our vFiler VDI test, Vol1 and Vol2. And we'll now go and validate that the virtual machines themselves are being created and split across those two data stores. And here's our desktops that we have created based upon our template. It seems that everything worked just as expected and better yet, it was all with one click. If you'd like to find out more, please log in to the Workflow Automations community site. You can also access www.netup.com or feel free to access our Clouds on Command blog post at communities.netup.com. Thank you very much and have a great day.